So let's look at how some of this occurs. Right? So what we've got on this slide, this is a four-line stunt kite on the left. I happen to own both of these. These aren't my pictures, but these are um, some kites that I fly. I'm one of those geeky folks that fly fun kites. All right. Anyway, so you've got a four-line stunt kite on the left and a two-line stunt kite on the right. right? Um, but when you're trying to fly these things, there's a consider considerable amount of similarity between the flight. Right? So with the, we'll look at the little psycho on the right here. And uh, with a two-line kite, if you want the kite to fly right, you pull all right, with your right hand. If you want to fly left, you pull with the left hand. And that's pretty similar. Right? Or that's, that's pretty straightforward. And then with a four-line stunt kite, you can pull, all right, but it will only work for a little bit. All right? So if I pull with my right hand, it'll kind of pull the kite to the right. It won't fly it to the right like you could do by twisting, right? Uh, but there's some there is some similarity of responses there. Okay? Um, specifically, what's happened here is that I, when I first started flying uh, competition kites years and years ago when I was a kid, uh, I would I had somebody teach me how to do the two line stuff, and I was at well, I didn't go to flight school or anything like that, but um, I, I knew somebody that was a, a flyer, and they taught me some of the tricks and some of those things to do. When I then moved on to a four-line kite, I didn't have to learn those same tricks. So yeah, two uh, procedures here. Like I was saying, that uh, I had been taught specifically how to fly a two-line kite, but I kind of got bored with that after several years. Uh, so I decided to get into this four-line kite stuff. Right? Uh, so they, there's some similarity in responses here. And right? so I, I, I was never taught explicitly how to fly the the four line, um, but I was the two line. So they're, they're not exactly the same, but a lot of the physical responses, you know, the pulling and things like that, and the position that you need to have your arms in, and the position that your uh, legs are in, and your back, and all that stuff are the same. So that that makes it, uh, it kind of gets it going. It gets that response generalization going. And then shaping takes care of the rest, right? Um, so the time that it takes to shape up that appropriate response is dependent on the similarity of those responses. So I've actually been flying four line kites for about, oh gosh, probably 10 years now. And I still don't have that one mastered. And of course, I don't do it very often. But uh, the idea is, is that if they were more similar, it would be quicker. Uh, I've flown several two-line stunt kites. And even though one's faster or slower or more responsive or less responsive than the other, the procedures are generally speaking the same. So then you learn how to be proficient with one kite quicker than another. Uh, so for example, the one you see there, the one on the right, that's called a psycho. And it's unbelievably responsive and unbelievably fast. Um, and one, the one I was on before that was much smaller. It was slower. It was it was a nice little kite, but it didn't do all the things that this one does. Um, but it only took me a couple of weeks to adjust to that new that new kite. That's because they were both two lines. The similarity of the response was the same. Um, you just had to tweak a couple of things, and that's that shaping. But the four line stuff, oh, it's a whole different world. A lot cooler though. All right, let's get keep going. More stuff, right? Response classes. Right? Uh, responses can be very different, right? But part of that. Ooh, what the heck's going on there? Let's try that again. All right. So the responses can be very different, but part of that class, right? Um, but they're all part of a response class. So flying a kite, uh, they're all that same response class, and there's something similar about it. Or the concept is similar. So we've got the two line, the four line, and that gigantic thing down there in the middle, um, which you can see the guy actually sitting down in order to fly it, using his entire weight. Um, so there's a lot of differences in terms of the little individual behaviors, but the outcome is all the same, right? It's a response class that's producing the same thing. And then you also have the Afghan style kite down below, which I got later got a chance to learn to try and fly, right? uh, which was a challenge uh, because that was a single line and you do fly those completely differently than you fly the other stuff. So, and, um, it is, and what Skinner was talking about when he talked about those, the three term contingency wasn't just one individual behavior. He was really talking about classes of general kite flying has been reinforced. And he's right, I've tried all those kites. You know, I like the top two much more than the bottom two, but um, I really don't like flying the ones in the middle, you know, because they pick you up and carry you down the field, you know. Um, <coughs> but the, the Afghan single line fighting kite, as they call it, uh, that one was, it was fun, it was a challenge, it was hard to do, but uh, it was fun. Um, so that seems to be reinforcing. And, you know, interestingly enough, in the future, if, you know, there's a new kite that comes out or I see somebody doing something, I'm gonna be happy to try it. Um, I'm never going to try that kite bugging thing. That's a whole different thing, and it's not really the response class of kite flying. That's going fast on land while being powered by air. Um, so no thanks. But uh, you get the idea, right? So these response classes that all get you to that same outcome are what's being reinforced, um, not just the individual little 
little behaviors, but those individual little behaviors are being shaped up as well with each new stimulus. So with the two-line kite or the four-line kite or the big parafoil down there or the or the or the Afghan kite. So, but in general, it's the kite flying has been reinforced, and I'm very likely to do that in the future. So. All right, let's look a little bit more about those response classes and let's talk about functionally equivalent responses. These are responses that produce that exact same outcome, same consequence, even though they're different. Um, again, the picture is of the screw. You can screw that screw in in many different ways, right? You can use a screwdriver, you can use a coin, you can use a knife, you can use a fork, uh, you can use a piece of metal, you can use all sorts of things, right? It gets you to that same outcome. Um, and that is what then gets reinforced, is that any one of those behaviors may work and you're going to reinforce any of the functionally equivalent responses with that particular outcome. So as you use those tools, you learn that, hey, maybe something else will work here too. And that's okay. That's functional equivalence, as we say. Right? Um, when you reinforce that things, you start to create behavioral momentum, right? So if we're reinforcing using a screwdriver, that's also going to produce this behavioral momentum towards uh, that will, it will kind of stick around in terms of um, any behavior I can do to get that same outcome. Right? So if I need to screw in a screw, I know what generally needs to happen, and I will use anything to make that happen, be that a penny or uh, a knife, I'll still make it work, right? Um, so that's the behavioral momentum. No, I've been able to do it in the past, I'll continue to do it in the future. Oh, I keep hitting the wrong button. 